You know, Kurama's a real G. He always has been. What's that? He's an absolute ass at the start? Well, of course he is. You would be too if you were hunted down and then imprisoned within a human being just because you were important. I mean, who wouldn't get upset? Your humanity taken away. Yeah, I know Kurama isn't human, but he's anthropomorphic. He's got human qualities, particularly in his intellect. Considering his age, he might be more human than everyone else, but nobody really cares. The Gold and Silver Brothers, Madara, Hashirama, Minato, even Mito Uzumaki, and she was his Jinchuriki for a long time. There are times when Jinchuriki begin to understand the humanity within their beast, such as the Jinchuriki to hold Chukaku before Gara, the old monk. Killer B is one of these too. But that doesn't matter, because Jinchuriki aren't treated much better. Honestly, this is what Naruto is about. It's about the misconceptions of what makes someone human. The journey of every hero and villain in the series is to become human. This is characterized well by Itachi Uchiha, which is why everyone loves him. Itachi went from being a genocidal killer and battle maniac to patriot and self-sacrificing hero, and the same is no less true for Kurama. In this story, I've spent a lot of time fleshing out his humanity. This is what takes him from brutal antagonist to a tragic hero. This story is a second part if you haven't noticed. There's another part that comes before this one, and if you haven't seen it, it's best to do so now so you can avoid confusion and spoilers. I'll give you some time to do so before we begin by saying... Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. The sun rose as early as it always did. The sun was always up bright and early. The sun was always on time. Two things Kushina was not. She was still in bed right now, drooling a miniature lake into one of the craters her nose had left in her pillow. Her snores sounded like a lumberjack having issues cranking his chainsaw and her hair. Well, you couldn't see anything but her hair. It was sticking out in all directions, matted and hanging in her mouth. Suddenly, in a chair in the corner of the room, Kodama appeared, taking the form she'd previously named Inari Uzumaki, just watching her. He looked out the window. He was quite sure when this academy she went to began, but he knew that if he did not wake her up now, they would likely be tardy. Not that this was anything new to Kushina. Kurama, on the few occasions that he tapped into her senses during the times before he realized who she was, knew that she was always being yelled at and punished for being late to class. Hey, Kushina, wake up! She was out of bed in a mere second, standing on the ceiling like some cat from a cartoon, having been scared half out of its skin. He looked up at her. Are we going to the academy today, or do you plan to sleep all day? She came down to the ground and grabbed her watch to look at the time. Her eyes looked as if they might fall out of her head they were so wide. Oh crap, we're gonna be late! She stumbled out of the room, grabbing the clothes she was planning to wear. She sniffed the armpits of her shirt and fell into the bathroom. Kurama, eating a piece of toast, listened in. The water was running, the hairdryer was on, and the sound of a toothbrush's bristles scrubbing quick and violently over teeth could be heard. He stepped back away and began to check if he had everything Kushina told him he would need for his first day at the academy. He was satisfied it was all there. Honestly, he wasn't sure how to feel. Was he excited? Well, that was the thing. He didn't know. A part of him looked forward to trying out this school thing, but another part of him did not look forward to being surrounded by more human cubs. And he definitely did not feel the need to learn the things he'd experienced firsthand. In fact, he was certain that whatever they told him would likely be wrong. But just so long as he could experience it with Kushina, it might be fun. He downed some juice to wash the dry toast down. Kushina raced out of the bathroom with one shoe on, hopping as she pulled on the other one, tying up her hair after finishing. Coming down the hall like an avalanche, she grabbed her bag and wedged a piece of toast between her teeth as she grabbed Kurama's hand. Hurry, we gotta go now! The two raced out of the house. As they ran down the road, Kushina finished her toast. She licked the tips of her fingers and then rubbed them on the sides of her shorts. To the roof! It's a straight shot! It's quicker! Kurama followed her lead and hopped onto the roof. He saw how she expertly maneuvered the obstacles. He would have been impressed by her reflexes if he didn't know that she had memorized this path after taking it a thousand times prior. Jumping back down to street level, they raced into the gated building and into the halls. Nobody was there, so it was an easy run. Suddenly, someone appeared. A group of shinobi were repairing one of the rooms after a fireball jutsu mishap. Carrying 4x4 planks out, they saw her coming but couldn't move. Going down on her left leg, her right foot pushed out and she slid under it. Kurama, who was running on all fours as if he were still a fox, jumped on top of the planks and catapulted himself off, hitting the ground behind Kushina as she rose back to her feet, not missing a stride. 
Taking a turn, they had so much momentum that the only way for them to keep going was to launch off the wall and continue on. They saw the door at the other end of the hall. It was closed, but she saw the homeroom teacher standing in front of the class. We're gonna be late, we're gonna be late! She rushed forward and slammed the door open just as the teacher was finishing roll call. Here, she shouted, and the teacher looked over. I already called your name. You're late. She stepped in and prostrated herself before the teacher. The teacher sighed. You're just in time to help introduce your new friend. I understand he's incapable of speech. She rose from the ground and nodded. He's a survivor of the Uzumaki clan downfall. They tried to kill him, but he survived, despite the loss of ability to speak. Kurama stepped in and offered a slight bow of respect. The teacher stood to the side and let the two children take their place at center stage. As Kurama stepped forward, Kushina spoke. This is Inari Uzumaki. He's a distant cousin to myself and has a distant blood relation with the Senju clan. He used to be in my class at Uzoshiogakure before I transferred here. I hope you all welcome him. Kurama offered a bow of respect. One of the kids in the back scoffed. Great, another tomato head. Kurama's eyes darted up at the kid, his hearing the best in the class. The kid looked down on him with surprise, wondering how he could hear what he said under his breath. The homeroom teacher then stepped up behind them. Feel free to take your seats wherever you want. And might I say, it's our honor to house another member of the Uzumaki clan. Konoha and Uzoshio were the greatest of allies. I'm sorry to hear of the loss. I had friends there. Kurama offered another bow to the teacher as Kushina did as well. Your care is welcomed. Thank you. The two of them began to make their way up the stairs when suddenly a blonde boy stopped them. Hey, Kushina, have you thought about what I said earlier? She looked over. I'm just not interested in you like that, Minato. I'm sorry. He leaned back in his chair with disappointment, balancing a pencil on his top lip. They then took their seats close to the back, where Kodama was less likely to have to interact with anyone and could freely speak without anyone hearing him. As they took their seats, he looked over to her. Who was that cub? She looked over at him. Cub? Oh, you mean Minato. That's Minato Namakaze, a boy without a real clan. I believe he's an orphan. He's really nice, but I think he comes on too strong. I would love him as a friend, but he keeps pushing for more. Shall I kill him for you? Kodama asked. Kushina almost burst out laughing. No, no, you don't need to kill him. He's still a friend. Suddenly, the homeroom teacher called out. Hey, you two be quiet. If you disrupt class again, I'll have you two separated. Kushina then called out. Yes, sensei. Sorry, sensei. She then spoke in a hushed tone. Let's just focus on class for now. And that's exactly what they did. They focused, but Kurama wasn't very interested. It seemed like he already had enough experience and knowledge to pass for a jonin, let alone a genin. But he perked up when they began talking about history. The teacher spoke. The long and bloody history of the Nine Tails is one full of death and destruction. For generations, it tormented the people and eradicated entire settlements. Its tales destroying the fertile farmlands and killing thousands. It wasn't until the great founding Hokage, Hashirama Senju, sealed it away that we knew peace. Now, the Nine Tails' powers can be used for good and the defense of mankind, whether it wishes to or not. Kushina sat beside him and looked over to the side at Kurama, whose faces bore annoyance. In his grip was a pencil he'd been twirling around. However, the more the teacher spoke, the more pressure he subconsciously put on the pencil, until eventually it snapped in two. Kushina raised her hand into the air. The teacher looked at it. I haven't started asking questions yet, Miss Uzumaki. She stood. I know, Sensei. My apologies, but we already know about the bloody history of the Ninetales. Can you tell us stories about the good things it did instead? The teacher seemed confused. Good things? She nodded. My people, the Uzumaki, have legends about the Ninetales. Our legends always spoke of it in a good light. It was a kami of the land and of nature. It helped provide for the nations during great famines and was worshipped as a protective spirit. The teacher looked down. We don't have anything in our textbooks about that. It's an interesting story, Miss Uzumaki, and any other time I would like to hear it, but right now we're in history class and only history will be taught here, so please, take your seat. She sat back down and looked over to Kurama. He looked to her out of the corner of his eye and offered an approving nod. He then proceeded to gaze at the window and ignore everything the insufferably ignorant teacher was saying. At lunch, Kushina once again found herself surrounded by the boys in the class who wished to torment her about the color of her hair. She normally could beat them up and would beat them up, but not today. Today she had company. The boys would turn to look and see Inari Uzumaki standing there. I guess tomatoes always grow in a bunch, they laughed. But slowly their laughter died down as they looked into the boy's eyes. The glow there, the look he gave, it was as if they suddenly realized that they were about to die. They felt his intent. He had to give them credit. Most adults would flee at the sight of this, but these kids stood their ground and in fact turned on him in hopes of beating him. This meant one of two things. Either they were courageous or they were very stupid. Perhaps it was a mix of both. That's generally what made the most daring and successful warriors. He recalled those in the past that were like that. And some of the most daring and stupid warriors he ever recalled were the Uchiha. And one of these boys probably was one, distantly. Probably one of his grandparents. 
They were always so sure of themselves, whether they deserved to be or not. One struck out at him, drawing blood from his lip. He turned around slowly to look at them as blood dripped from his face. He punched the boy in the face hard enough to send him flying into the wall, leaving it cracked. He turned and punched one of the bullies in the stomach via an uppercut, which sent the bully into the ceiling where he stayed. The third one fell on his rear and began to push away, raising his arms in search of some defense, his voice unable to beg for the mercy his eyes were pleading for. Kurama spread his claws as he approached him. He raised his hand into the air, preparing for a single swift motion that would end the child's life for good. But before he could follow through, he felt Kushina grab his hand. That's enough, Inari. They're not going to be causing us any trouble anymore. Kurama let his claws return to the fingernails they once had been. He silently walked over to his chair and sat down, appearing somewhat satisfied with himself. Kushina took her seat as well. It was frightening to think that Kurama could have committed murder, but she was glad to know that he was there to stand up for her when she couldn't. As they sat there, the boy in the ceiling finally became dislodged through the pull of gravity, hitting the ground below. Yeah, Kurama and Kushina ended up getting punished for that. Many days were spent staying after, cleaning the chalkboard, sweeping the classroom, and just sitting there. As the sun set, they were on their way back to Kushina's home. She looked over. Thanks for protecting me, but we do need to work on how much strength you use. Those boys really deserve to get their asses kicked, but it would be too much hassle if they were killed. That would get us into real trouble, like thrown up and under the jail kind of trouble. Just as she was saying that, a group of older shinobi surrounded them, two Genin and one Chunin, the older brothers of the kids Kodama had utterly obliterated in class. The shinobi wearing the flak jacket stepped forward. I hear you've been bullying my kid brother here, he said with a smirk of anticipation. Kushina stepped forward. They started it. They're the ones who were bullying us. And your brothers were the ones who struck first. I say they got what they deserved. The shinobi scoffed. You talk all high and mighty for an outsider, tomato head. You think you can just walk into our village and act like you own the place? You're just an academy student. Me? I survived the tuning exams and came out on top, he said pointing to his flak jacket. I've done things you can't even imagine doing, and I'm about to take all the strength it took me to survive and use it to kick your asses, starting with you, Inari. I'm going to end your shinobi career right here and now. The unexpected reaction here was that Kodama smiled. He finally understood. Definitely stupid. No courage, just ignorance, he thought to himself. The three shinobi ran forward. Kushina, in a rage, screamed out, Yeah, big move! Gang up on the kid! Village is definitely safe with freaks like you around! Kodama stepped forward. As the three met him, they found themselves on the ground as Kodama stood in the trees above. The shinobi stood and looked up. What, running already? They threw a flurry of shuriken up at him, which he then dodged. He hit the ground and turned to face them. They weaved their hand signs and each launched a fireball jutsu at him. One formed from the three. Kushina was appalled. She saw the fire eat up Kodama. She called out to him, Kodama! The three shinobi straightened their backs and looked back with a touch of concern. Maybe we went a little too far. The Chunin then spoke. No body, no proof. But now we gotta silence the girl, too. They turned to Kushina and began to approach. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Minato arrived with a kunai in his hand. You won't touch her, he shouted. The three shinobi laughed. And who's gonna stop us? You? Minato didn't take his eyes off them. Still, he spoke. Silently, as if to be unheard by everyone but Kushina, he said, Run away now. Go get help. I'll hold them off. Suddenly, there was a roar. Not just any roar, though. The roar of a beast. They turned back. In the fire, they saw the shadow of a young boy, but above him, the fire formed into the silhouette of the Ninetales. He rushed forward and struck out at them with enough force to send the two Genin into the wall. He then formed a tailed beast bomb in his hand and drove it into the stomach of the Chunin, blasting him off Team Rocket style. He seemed feral, his hair standing on ends. But he wasn't done though. He turned his head to see the bully he spared earlier. The boy quaked in his shoes. He turned and attempted to run, but Kodama was on him in a moment. Tackling him to the ground, Kodama straddled him and raised his fist, bringing it down on the boy's face over and over again. Kushina and Minato stood speechless at not only the strength, but the brutality. Nine pristine tails appeared from behind Kodama as the ears of a fox appeared atop his head. He's gonna kill him, Minato shouted as he ran forward. Kodama, stop! Kushina stepped forward. She shot adamantine chains that wrapped around his neck, arms, and feet pulling him off the kid and forcing him to his knees. He growled and raged, foam dripping from his mouth. Kushina stepped forward, a swirling mark appearing on the palm of her hand. She pressed it to his forehead. Go back in, right now. Suddenly, the boy was reverted to chakra and returned to his jinchuriki. She stood there trying to catch her breath. She turned around to look at the carnage and saw only Minato staring at her. What the hell was that? Kushina ignored the question and turned to the boy Kodama had been beating. His face was swollen, battered, and bruised. He needs to go to the hospital, Minato said. Kushina looked down. Call one. I'm going home. Once you call the medical nin, I suggest you leave too. No one will ever believe that this could be done by us. Minato looked around at the carnage. 
Thankfully, none of the bullies that came for them had been killed. The youngest, who Kurama had beaten within an inch of his life, tried to implicate Kushina, Kurama, and Minato. But his older brother, the Chunin, refused to elaborate on who beat them. The shame of being beaten by someone half his age and size, especially when teamed up with two other people, was too much to acknowledge. Because of this, Kushina and Kurama were never approached by the Konoha police force. But moving back to the events of that night, we can see how things continue. Kushina makes it back to her house and closes the door behind her. She closes all the blinds and turns on soft light as if she were trying to hide from everyone that she was home. Entering her subconscious, she found Kodama back in his cage. He sat there, his back to her as she approached. Kodama, we need to talk. He didn't respond. She stood there. What you did was too far. You didn't have to beat him half to death. I know. I'm sorry, he said without looking at her. She stood there. So what happened? Why did you flip out like that? Did they really make you that angry? Three little humans disturb the sleeping god? Kodama was silent for a moment. I hate fire. She tried to process the meaning of this. Fire? You hate fire? He still did not look at her. I hate fire. I saw a lot of it in my younger years. Fire of war. Fire that burned down my village. The fire of those who killed my Kana. She stood there and listened. They dredged something up. He nodded. The way they acted. They threatened you and attacked with fire. I didn't know where I was at the time. I was just scared they would take you away again. She walked to the locked gate. I'm not going anywhere, Kurama. You and I are one now. We inhabit the same body, so as long as we're together, they can't hurt us. She unlocked the cage and opened it up. She stepped in and walked to face him. He looked away from her shamefully. She stood up on her tiptoes and kissed his large nose. I'm here, Kurama. I'm not going anywhere. Now, want to come back out with me? He nodded. Yes. Back outside of her subconscious, he took his human form again. The ears he had always had so much of an issue hiding were still there atop of his head, but now they drooped in a sorrowful manner. His tail just dragged slowly across the ground as he continued avoiding eye contact. She sat there. Don't be so ashamed, Kurama. I'm not upset. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Kurama's ears stood in fear at the sound. He scrambled to find his hat. He put it on backwards, so quick he didn't even know which way it was facing. The nearest blanket he pulled around his waist to hide his tails. Kushina stepped to the door and slid it open slowly and peeked out. Blonde hair and blue eyes stared back at her through the crack. Minato? she asked. He stood there. Please let me come in. She looked back at Kurama and then back to Minato. Why? Minato's face showed concern. Because we almost killed four people that need to talk about what happened. She shook her head. Just go home, Minato. Forget everything you saw. It doesn't concern you. She tried to close the door, but he put his foot between the door and the jam. Just forget what I saw? I can't forget that. I've been trying to wrap my head around it for a while. I need to know what it is or it's going to drive me nuts. Let me in. She sighed for a moment and undid the latch, letting him in. She closed the door behind him and locked it. Minato stepped into the abode and looked around. He then walked into the same room as Kurama. He stepped over to the orangish, red-haired boy and stopped, standing just above him. He raised his hand slowly and lifted his hat from his head. I knew it. He turns around with an accusatory finger. So you are housing Kutsune here. She grips his finger, pushes it down, and raises her finger to her lips. Shush, you don't understand half what you're talking about. He stood there as a candle crackled. Then explain it to me. For the next hour, she begrudgingly explained the situation to him. How she had become Lady Mito's successor and was currently the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, and how Inari Uzumaki was the Nine Tails. How his name was truly Kurama. Minato sat and listened, his gaze alternating between the fox-eared boy and the serious expression of Kushina, who was spilling all this information to him. Minato began to ask questions when she was finished with her exposition. The first thing he asked was, If he's the Ninetales, why is he not... hateful? Why hasn't he tried to destroy the village? Have you just been keeping him on a tight leash? She shook her head. Those are just stories, just one side of things. As I tried to say in class earlier, there's a kind side to the Nine Tails that my people recorded in their history that they don't teach here. Kurama was originally a kami of agriculture from which Inari was idealized. Many people even called the Nine Tails Inari. He was the god of agriculture, farming, rice, blacksmiths, and anything else that could be used to prosper. He only unleashed his wrath when he felt he had to. But that's all anyone seems to remember of him. Minato looked back, and he's now inside of you? Kushina nodded. They wanted me to be his vessel a cage with which he can't escape and can be used whenever I want. But the thing is, I like him. You like him? Minato asked. Kushina nodded. He's my friend. It took time for me to get used to him, but ever since, he's been a friend of mine. When I got kidnapped by Kumo, I said that I was rescued by Inari. That's only a half-truth. When I was captured, I undid the seal and Kurama came out to save me. He helped me escape. He's protecting me. Minato nodded. He returned to Kurama and offered a slight bow of respect. Forgive me for not recognizing you earlier, Lord Kurama. Kurama looked out of the corner of his eye. Kushina scratched the back of her head and smiled through the awkwardness. 
There's no need to do that, Minato. Kodama raised his hand. No, no, let him continue. Minato raised himself up. I will help you keep your secret. You have my word. Kodama offered a slight nod and Kushina offered a smile. Minato stayed with them for dinner under Kushina's invitation. Oh, it was more like an order. She ordered him to stay for dinner, and so he did. It was through this that he got to witness the relationship that she had with Kodama. After dinner, he watched as Kodama took the form of a tiny fox kit and crawled into Kushina's lap where he stretched out and let her scratch him and rub his belly. Kodama laid there in his lap and felt for a single moment that he was back in time, hundreds of years ago when Kana was alive, back when she would feed and coddle him. He almost seemed to fall asleep in her lap. Minato seemed to enjoy this. Cool secret. It's like we're part of an exclusive club now or something. Kushina looked up at him. A secret club. Remember, it's secret. He nodded as he stood. I'll keep it secret, don't worry. He would bid them both farewell and would head to leave. The entire village will know by tomorrow, Kurama said bluntly. You're not, she began to say, but stopped. Yeah, you're probably right. Kurama sat there. Why does it matter if they know though? He asked. Kushina struggled. I'm not supposed to take the seal off for you. If they know you're free to leave whenever you want, at best they'll force me to seal you back up. At worst, he looked up to her. She shook her head. Minato promised not to say anything, so we'll be fine. And yes, they were fine. Minato was an excitable young chap, but if he gave his word on something, he would keep his word. He didn't say a single thing to anybody about it. Time continued to pass. School days came and went. Kodama and Kushina garnered a bit of a reputation, both earning a title. Kushina was known as the Red Hot Habanero of the Leaf, and Kodama came to be known as the Naga Jalokia. Most kids tended to avoid them at this point, all except for Minato, who had changed desks just to sit next to them. Now, Minato was a skilled shinobi, but he was hardly the only one. Kushina was pretty strong too, mostly thanks to her Uzumaki genes, which earned her a spot as one of the class's elites. But neither of them could compare to Kodama, whose energy wells and experience dwarfed even the teacher's power. Because of this, the three were allowed to graduate early. They'd be put under Jiraiya, the student of Hiruzen. Jiraiya would welcome the trio to his team and start off with a bell test. Now, Jiraiya would be warned about the potential of his team, particularly the power of the one known as Inari Uzumaki, but how strong could they possibly be? Jiraiya would find out when Kodama takes the bells the moment he gets his hands on them. This would obviously upset Jiraiya, as this was meant to be a test to learn what his students could do, and he barely learned anything. He demands a do-over. This time, it takes a little longer, but Kodama still gets the bells relatively easily. Once more, Jiraiya demands a mulligan. This goes on all day until Jiraiya finally resorts to Sage Mode with the help of Fukasaku and Shima, both of whom are startled that Jiraiya would feel the need to utilize them just to beat down a couple of kids at a game of tag. Kushina would ask Kurama to tone it down a little bit. Kurama would smile. But this is the most fun I've had in years. I like this old man. I want to play tag some more. She would laugh. Just dial it back a little so me and Flash over here get a chance to tag him too. Maybe we'll go play tag later. You'll have to give us a head start though. Kurama would nod. Deal. He then proceeds to hold back quite a bit against Jiraiya. Enough for the old sage to really get a move on and keep away long enough for Kushina and Minato to get a shot. They come close many times, but Jiraiya is a slippery one. Kodama comes up behind him and goes to take the bells, but slows down just in time for Jiraiya to notice and dodge. Kodama would fall to the ground. Oh no, I missed. Whatever will I do? As the day comes to an end, Jiraiya is left on the ground panting. You kids really tire me out. He looks at them with a smile. I think we're going to get along just fine. This was the birth of Team Jiraiya. It was during this time that Minato would approach Kodama. Remember that time you almost killed that Chunin? Kodama would look at him and nod. What was that technique you used on him? Minato would ask. Tailed Beast Bomb, a sphere densely packed with chakra. Why? Minato would look down at his hand. I want to do it. Kurama's face pulled into a skeptical smirk. I don't think you can. It's a different kind of attack. I don't think you humans possess the same type of chakra as a tailed beast. Kushina might be able to do it, but I don't think you can. Minato would think. Well, you said it was just densely packed chakra, right? I can probably do that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, just so long as it has the same effects, right? Kurama shrugged. I guess. Minato seemed to grow excited. Can you show it to me again? Kurama would sigh and form one in his hands. Minato would come close and start to study it. He would write down in his book everything he could learn about it just by looking at it. And when he decides to learn about it through physical interaction, he pokes it. The thing explodes in his face. Kurama would wipe the soot away from his face and snap at Minato. Damn it! Don't do stuff like that, you'll get us both killed! Minato, hanging upside down, his trousers caught on a branch, pulled out his notepad and began to write in it. It swirls inside. That's the secret to the technique. It spins. Suddenly, the tree branch snaps and Minato falls. Kurama sighs and leans back against the tree. At first, he was skeptical about all this human interaction, but right now, 
He was glad he decided to do it. Kushina, Minato, and Jiraiya. These three humans were fun. They were kind. They reminded him of the humans he used to know. They were nothing like Madara or Hashirama. They actually seemed to care about others. He felt that this was the start of something beautiful. Something he never thought he would have again. Something he never thought he would need. Something he thought he would never want. A friendship. I think I'll stop our story here for now. Seems like a perfect time to call it quits. I want to save some for later, right? I hope you all enjoyed this story. I'm enjoying reimagining Kurama and Kushina's relationship, but things will likely get rocky from here on out as this team is training and becoming shinobi during the time of the Second Shinobi World War. This means that whether Kurama wants to or not, he's going to have to be present and fighting in this world-spanning conflict. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story. Be certain to leave a comment below to tell us what your favorite part of the story was and what you think should happen in the next chapter. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.